Hi there, welcome or welcome back to Upset Planted again. My name is Courtney and in today's video, I am going to be giving you an update on some plants that were not doing well a few months ago. So in this video, I was talking about a couple of plants that I was having trouble with. I wasn't really sure what was wrong with them specifically. And I talked about ways that I felt like I could help heal these plants. And in today's video, I'm going to show you the update on what those plants look like, what I actually did, and slash or whether or not they actually survived. And if they didn't, I'll tell you what I think went wrong. So let's dive right in. Basically a couple of days ago, I knew that I needed to repot it, but I didn't have full, like a full bag of garden soil. I had a little bit of garden soil, a ton of weka and a ton of perlite. So I just threw it all together, repotted it. And I was like, oh, this will be a cool experiment. It's not a cool experiment. Um, this plant needs some soil. It dried out so quickly. It just, it's not, it's going to be a no for me. Um, with this, uh, it's just, it just, it's so bad. So and the clip you just saw, you saw how bad that plant was. It was already in terrible condition when I got it and what I did right away didn't help. So I had repotted it into just a random mix that I didn't put any thought or effort into. It was just like whatever else I had because I didn't have my um, regular soil mix. So the one that I had was super drying on this plant. It's in my hand, I'm looking at it right now. The mix I had was super, super drying when I repotted it. So I kind of just pushed it over the edge <laughs> with um, that terrible repot. So what I ended up doing was repotting it again with a better soil mix of garden soil, perlite, and just a little bit of LECA. And then I moved that plant into my plant room where I have the majority of my plants. And it sits right next to the humidifier and the light for this plant is just, it's bright and direct light, but the way that my windows face, it's not getting as harsh light as I felt like it was downstairs. Um, and I think that has helped improve it significantly. And I still do have this plant and this is what it looks like now. So still not perfect, but it has improved significantly. So I will say one of the things that I have noticed about this Calathea compared to my other ones is that it is so thirsty. It is way thirstier than every, any Calathea that I've ever had and especially more than my tropical plants. So it's something that I have to be very conscious of and I'm just going to assume basically that the leaves like this, they're, they're gonna die off. It already had leaves that were dying off. It's gonna die off. I'm not really concerned about it um, because it wasn't pest, it was just damage, like nutrient damage. It was just not doing well anyways. But this one is the newest leaf and it's literally perfect. It, it's it's beautiful, it's perfect. I'm happy with it. Um, but as you, like you can hear this one, it's so dry. And I just watered it probably a week ago. So I think keeping up with watering on this one is probably just my, my biggest thing that I have to be conscious of. Um, but besides that, I am happy to see that it is still alive um and to see what ends up happening with this and this plant was 12 bucks yeah this plant was 12 dollars from walmart um when i got it a couple of months ago and i have no plans honestly of propagating this plant to be honest i just want to grow it as big as i possibly can but i am excited to see how much more it will grow and improve process on why this plant is doing so terribly is one lack of light now it may seem like it's getting really good light here but on my kitchen counter i've actually had a lot of bad luck with plants on this counter and i should have guessed that this would not be any different now we have the skindapsis pictus that was doing terrible that plant was doing so terrible for a lot of reasons things that i mentioned in the video specifically um lighting i think was really the biggest thing that i was fighting with that plant um and it just got super leggy and I had to chop it up and save what I could. And I actually did a video and I'll link it above where I did this whole like saving this plant um, video. And I'm basically updating you from that video, which I think was either at the end of September or beginning of October. Um, and I'm gonna show you what that plant looks like now and talk about it a little bit. So this is what the plant looks like and I don't think it hates it, but I don't think it loves it. So 
I ended up doing a pull with moss and I honestly, as the plant parent, don't love it. I don't love moss poles like this because I feel like for me it's really hard to maintain with spraying it and make sure and making sure that it's moist and then the wood's gonna rot even faster than it normally would if I was just leaving it in here. So that's a whole nother thing. Um, but the plant actually just grew its first new leaf, these little right here, and then there's another one on the way. It's literally so small, but it is growing. And I also will say this one is really dry as well. Um, most of my tropical plants, I feel like don't dry out that fast, but for some reason, these specific ones that I'm talking about in the video, I feel like have dried out or, or they need more water. I have to pay attention to it more. Like this one, I'm pretty sure I just watered it last week and I feel like it needs watering again. I did attempt uh, to wa bottom water this plant. Um, and honestly, I really can't tell the difference, to be honest. So, this one is not an epic fail, but it's not growing as fast as I expected it to. Um, and this is like the last one of the ones that I originally had like since I think last year. Um, but I actually just bought a huge, huge one that's like five feet long. And I absolutely love that one. I had to get another one because I love this plant. But, oh, Jesus. I thought I saw something. Moving forward uh, with, oh, is that dirt? Oh my god. So moving forward, um, I'm gonna keep up with the hydration. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna re I'm gonna remove this moss. I don't love it. I'm gonna remove it um, and then just keep it in the pot and keep it hydrated. One of my Cebu Blue cuttings, I put it in here a while ago um, and it's been lifeless. It's come back to life. Now it's kind of back to its lifeless mode with a yellow leaf. If you've been watching my videos for a while, you know that I love Cebu Blue. I have a million there's literally one right behind me. I have them everywhere. I just did the video of where I was taking up my plants. I just staked up a single cutting of a Cebu Blue that's like two and a half feet long. I love Cebu Blue. So this one I wasn't really sure. Like I mentioned in the video what I kind of thought was wrong, but honestly, sometimes you just have to make an executive decision with your plants and chop it up or throw it in the trash. This one I decided to chop up and propagate. And here are most of those cuttings. I will say in general, my Cebu Blue cuttings usually look a lot better, but these ones are in a window, um, which is a little bit different than the other ones that I have propagated in the past. So I don't know if them being in that window has made their color not as like silvery blue. As you can tell, that one is more silvery blue and these are like really green. It may have to do with the way that I'm propagating them. It's just water, there's no nutrient in there. It's, it's, it's really not getting nothing but water. Um, that's really all I did to save it. I put this in a pot with the plant that I actually staked up in that video that I just mentioned. And I mean, they do usually propagate really well. Um, and my other propagations in water with Cebu Blue have fared really well. So I really think this one has to do with that plant was already not doing super well. And then I chopped it up. So it's kind of just like growing those same type of leaves. Um, but I'm gonna keep them and just stuff them into random Cebu Blues that I have to make them more full. And as far as this plant goes, I mean, it technically survived. It's not in the same pot. It's not in the same uh, configuration, but it did survive. If you know anything about me, you know that I do not do succulents. I don't do succulents. They're just not my thing. Um, and here we have a perfect example of why this string of corals was so gorgeous and so full. I've only watered it once. I try not to mess with it at all, and I honestly do not know how to take care of this plant. Um, I feel like it has root rot. I I haven't taken it out of the container that it came in, which I think is part of the problem. Um, and it definitely needs to be repotted. Look at that. It just came off. There's literally nothing to say about the string of pearls. I feel like they can tell that I don't like succulents. They can tell that I don't like them. This plant is dead and gone. I actually had two and you know, they're both dead and gone. I got great advice on TikTok and YouTube and it's just a plant, I just, I feel like it can tell that I don't like it. So it just dies. And honestly, I'm all for like buying the same plant again and trying again if you really love it. But honestly, Shringa Pearls is one that I'm honestly not sure that I will want to buy again. Like I would probably just have to buy a mature one, but then if it dies, I'm gonna be like, Ugh. I don't know. Stringer Pearls is just not my jam. And yeah, so that one is absolutely dead and gone. <laughs> one of my oldest Adansone that I grew from a cutting, it was really small, 
Um, and I saw this yellow leaf and I got concerned, so I brought it out here. This is like my isolation station. Um, yeah, there's like a lot of yellowing, um, but I don't see, I didn't see anything immediately. So I kind of just isolated it. I'm gonna treat it today, give it some fresh water with some peroxide in it, um, and check all of the leaves just in case there's some pest or something, I don't know. Sometimes plants just yellow, and that's just a natural cycle, and that's okay. But um, yeah, not too cute right now. The Monstera added Sonii. This one I'm a little sad about because this is one of the first ones that I got oh, so long ago, like earlier this year, and I loved this plant. I still do absolutely love it, but unfortunately, I'm not sure if I mentioned in the video, but it was just it was just giving a lot of trouble. And honestly, the thing with Monstera adansonii that I've experienced is that it's hard to get rid of pests in the normal way that you would with like wiping the leaves because the leaves are already so, so freaking fragile. So this one had spider mites um, and it just, it wasn't worth it to me to save it because I feel like this plant is more accessible than it was when I first got it. So I ended up just uh, buying some more and I'll show you them. And Sony Eye <laughs> that I ended up buying. And as you can see, they're doing a lot better than the one that was featured in the video. I will say the growth pattern of these is a little bit strange. It's kind of going long ways. So I may end up chopping and just stuffing them back into the pot or propagating them in uh, water and then stuffing them back into the pot. But I just love this plant, had to buy another one. Sad about the other one because I kind of liked how dramatic it was in the water and it was so long. It was probably like three feet long. It was really long, um, but I love this plant and I'm glad they're more accessible because I just think they're dang on gorgeous. I just think they're dang on gorgeous. I'd probably buy another one. I just think they're a beautiful plant. And the last plant we have here is my Philodendron domesticum. Now, uh, you know I always check for pests whenever I see any type of yellowing because that's always my first concern, but that wasn't the case here. So what is happening, I think, is water stress. So I'm a chronic underwater and I tend to underwater my plants. Um, and then when I do water them, I kind of flush them. And that dramatic cycle is probably not helpful for my plants. So what I'm going to do now to really help other plants that I think are water stressed is just to miss the top layer of soil Oil daily or every couple of days in between waterings just to make sure that I'm keeping the soil moist and keeping the plant hydrated as I possibly can. And last but certainly not least is the Philodendron domesticum. Now this was one of the first more uncommon plants that I have ever worked with um, starting a few months ago. So honestly care was something that I was not sure of compared to the other more common plants that I have in my collection and now I have like a bunch of uncommon plants and I'm still learning and still growing. So this one, um, I was not sure why the plant was turning yellow, like the leaves were turning yellow. First I was like, oh, like they're the bottom leaves, like they're just, you know, it's maturing, whatever. Um, but it just, it just looked and felt like a problem that was not going away. Um, I checked for pests, pulled it out of the pot, repotted it, and it just those two leaves died i ended up chopping and propagating the other pieces and i put them all in water one of them just straight up shriveled up and died like they personally in my experience haven't liked water propagation so when that one died i was like well let me try to rescue the other two because they did not have roots at all everything had a node but the roots were not growing and it was weeks and week it's been literally weeks um so about maybe like two or three weeks ago i transferred the remaining two to soil and they're just chilling across the room there honestly hasn't been any <laughs> growth um so they're not really cute to look at they're kind of just like i hope they survive i'm not really sure but the one that i'm gonna talk about is the main mother plant where these plants came from because this one is a plant miracle so here it is here it is I cannot tell you how excited I am that this is growing back. I was unsure. I don't even want, know why I had the feeling of like, let me just let me just put it back in the pot and just water it. Let me just keep watering it, treat it like regular plant, like it might come back. And I am so glad that I did not just throw this away because I like to, I will throw it away. I like to throw a plant away if it's just not giving. 
But something in me was like, Courtney, just give this plant another chance. Just give it another chance. And I did, and I'm so freaking happy. Oh my God, I'm so happy. Two leaves, another little baby about to sprout, I think, yep. And one um, down here, and oh my God. So this literally goes back to one of the things that I always say, if a plant like dies off, it doesn't mean that it's always dead because this one had great roots. And I was just like, you know what, I'm just gonna keep it. I kind of just threw it in the window seal and I would just water it every week or two and kind of just like, mm, yeah, I got the space. It's here. And then I saw a leaf pop out and I was like, oh, holy crap, a leaf has popped out. And I was like, okay, okay, it's giving, it's giving. And then just more and more leaves are popping out and I could not be happier. I love this plant. I think it's gorgeous. The leaves are huge. Like they're probably like, I'm looking at the one across the room maybe six inches in total i don't know they're pretty big like the leaves get pretty big um and i'm just excited to see it grow it is under the grow light now because before it was really huge and i couldn't really put it anywhere so i had to throw it in the windowsill but now that it's this size it is under a grow light and i will be working on trying to get a different kind of grow light configuration for my bigger plants because i feel like grow lights have helped my plants a lot and they like it and i like it and obviously it absolutely works. I hope you enjoyed this update video on those plants that are not doing well. I wanna give you a quick reminder that it's okay if a plant, like you can just throw a plant in the trash. Plants should not cause you <laughs> mental stress in, like it's not that deep, it's just plants. I love plants, plants are like me. I love plant art, doing plants, making plant things, I love it all. But at the end of the day, it's something fun. It's a hobby, it's my business, it's what I like to do. But plants should not cause you mental stress and anguish. It should be fun, it should be exciting. It's like learning and growing about yourself and about other things um, in nature that are inside of your home and make you happy. And you should just have a really good time with plants. I wanna thank you again so much for watching today's video and I will see you in the next one.